choice of parents. You didn't choose your parents. All those natural things, you didn't make a choice. But as for the spiritual, you make a choice. You take a stand. And you make up your mind and take a decision. And so the natural seed, you didn't decide we are going to be the natural seed. You are just natural seed. But that doesn't profit much because you didn't have any choice in that. But the one that you choose... The one that you decide, the one that you say, there is value in being Abraham's seed spiritually. There is the importance in being Abraham's seed spiritually. And there is the heritage and the inheritance of the people of God if I'm Abraham's seed. And there are promises that he has made unto Abraham and to seed. And because I want the promises, because I delight in, I desire those promises, then I make up my mind and take a decision. I'm going to be Abraham's seed. That means you want to be born again. You want to be a child of God. You want to have that inner transformation that that inner transformation then makes you a seed of Abraham and by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of God when you make up your mind like that you say yes this is what I'm going to do a child of God it's repentance that's a turning around and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ then you're, you'll be one of the people we're talking about tonight look at that verse again that is they which are the children of the flesh these are not the children of God but the children of promise are counted for the seed the children of promise counted for the seed I'm looking at Galatians chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 27 Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. We're talking about what it takes. The decision it takes. The repentance it takes. The transformation it takes for you to become of that seed of Abraham. And then you can live in the faith of that seed of Abraham. And you can direct your life and live your life in the faith of the seed of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, we're looking at it from verse 27. In verse 27 it says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, immersed into Christ, embedded in Christ, a branch in the vine, it says, you are put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 29. Very important to what we are talking about. And it says, and if ye be Christ's, then are ye what? Abraham said, if you belong to Christ, that means if you are taking Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, your Redeemer, and the controller of your life, it says, if you belong to Christ, if he be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise of God, according to the promise. We're looking at Abraham's seed with Abraham's faith. We're going to look at the whole family of Abraham. And if you know the real family of Abraham, we have Abraham, we have Sarah, and we have who? Isaac. The father, and then the wife of Abraham, and then we have the son. And as you look at the composite life of those three, then you will see the kind of faith that they had and what their faith produced. And remember once again, you want a model. You want a model. You're looking at that model and you're saying, if I am Abraham's seed and I'm going to have Abraham's faith, then this is my model. And then you remember the mind. That has to change. That has to turn around. Because it's the mind that determines the direction in which you go and what you eventually achieve in life. And the meditation. What you're meditating upon. And you'll find that as you look at Abraham, what he meditated on and the word he took and, and the way he led his life. That's why the blessings came upon his life. And what you say, your mouth, what you say, well, the, the messages you are hearing and the convention you are attending will not have too much impact if there is no change in the mouth. The things you say, the things you say to yourself and the things you say to other people. So we're going to look at the whole family, Abraham, 
and Sarah. And I see three points. Then number one, the faith of Abraham's seed. And we take that from the life of Abraham himself. The faith of Abraham's seed. Number two, the fruitfulness of Abraham's spouse. The fruitfulness of Abraham's spouse. And you'll find is a seed's faith that still led to that fruitfulness. And then number three is the faithfulness of Abraham's son. The faithfulness of Abraham's son. Abraham's seed. Abraham's spouse. Abraham's son. Number one, the faith of the faith of who? Abraham's seed. We're looking at Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 16. Chapter 4 of Romans. And we're looking at verse 16. Remember now the seed of Abraham. Those are the people who by faith are taking Jesus Christ as their Lord. As their Savior. As their Redeemer. And the burden of sin is gone. And the guilt, condemnation of sin is gone. And he can say, yes, I believe. He made a change in my life. A change in my heart. Because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Abraham's seed. We're looking at Romans chapter 4. And looking at the faith of Abraham's seed. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to who? All the seed. If it's by faith, so that the promise of God, all the promises of God in Christ, which are yes and amen, might be fulfilled for all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. The seed must have the faith of Abraham. The faith of Abraham. And then it says, who is the father of us all? Now what's the faith of Abraham? It now begins to tell us what the faith of Abraham is. How you describe, how you demonstrate the faith of Abraham. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Number one, he believed the promise. He believed the promise. You look at the word of God and you believe the promise. I know that these are days of motivation. You know, in, in the United States here, you have motivational speakers. And these motivational speakers, I mean, even in the secular, and they, they move around quite a lot and give this seminar and that seminar. And if you are used to that field, you might uh, know some names. But some of those names, uh, you know, I understand, they're now evaluating what they have done. They're evaluating where they have been. And they're evaluating the, you know, the things that they used to say and the people they, that attended their seminars. You know, the days of, I don't want to mention their names, but also talk about positive thinking and the positive confession. And they repeat this and this over and over again and positive affirmation. And then, you know, with all those affirmations and the positive things and utterances that we say, there's no change in the mind. There's no grace in the heart. And there is uh, no change of character. And we just say, this will be and this will be. Would you know that there are laws that govern all these things? And the promises... You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the General Superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our, our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week and the one we are going to listen to the next week by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.